Welcome to Toy Hill Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler. I'm going to do a silhouette sunset, something that I can get mostly done in, in not too long a time. Uh, when I say me, um, of course, I realize that um, this is not a tutorial and I'm not trying to show really people how to paint. I've been working at this for such a long time that I can work very fast. So I'm just going to pretty much use the watercolor approach to acrylics in the sky and then I might go back into it. What I mean by that is I'm going to thin the paint way down and let it just merge together in what we call a bleeding or wet and wet, wet, wet and wet technique and just see what happens. I finally got a better red. I've been complaining about the red that I have that is just not very vibrant. So Hoping that's going to make a difference. And just going to let it bleed, see what happens. As I said, I might go back into it. Um, acrylics is very versatile that way. You can use it as a watercolor. But traditionally, artists start off with it in a thin layers and then build it up. So this can stand as the wet and wet watercolor, or I can just build it up. not trying for any particular thing, but I do want to get a particular effect that um, is, is rather tricky with the way this, these colors are going together and then getting a lot of light to shine through. With my oil paints, as I've said many times, they take a lot longer. They're done over a lot of layers. Even though I work very quickly. I think a lot quicker than a lot of artists. I've just been doing this for so long. Of course they have too, but I don't know. There's something about how I have just spent so much time with a brush that I really do move fast. As I said before, I did demos at pretty much a speed of light for Art Appreciate students so that they hopefully appreciate what artists do and not just look at paintings and say, oh yeah, there's a painting, <laughs> which a lot of people do, and don't have any understanding of how difficult it really is and how much goes into it. But I did them so quick because most of the ones I did them for were Art of pre students and they just had to take the class for a credit and they weren't really that, really that interested. Okay, uh, that's sort of what I'm talking about is this really melding look that I want to get. And I'm using it a little thicker than I thought I would. I'm going to go back into a little bit. Yeah, this is not going to probably take a whole lot of time because I am just going to do a silhouette. Now, I am going to use a lot of different colors in the trees in the field here, so some of them are probably going to pop out. This is something that I have developed over many, many decades that works really well for me to use many colors at the same time. Not something they would ever encourage you in an art class, but I do that because it just brings out other colors as I'm painting and then I react to them and decide, well, do I like that? Should I go back into it? So I've said before, art is always an experience. It's always a learning process. It's not what a lot of people think. They just know how to do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It is something that you continually learn how to do your whole life. And I seriously doubt you'd find another artist that would say that. But, you know, we're all very different, and as I've said before, if there's one thing you can count on is artists are very opinionated. Probably should be using a little bit smaller brush for this. Just want to get that, there's a certain look that I'm trying to get in my oil paint that uh, is something I can get, but not exactly the way I want it. Of course, as I've said before, you never get exactly what you want, no matter how hard you try, because then it would be boring. It's always a process, always learning. Okay, the colors aren't coming out, which is what I kind of thought they would do, but maybe I'm just using a little too thick. So, put more water into this and maybe they'll start popping out more. But that's okay. If it just turns out to be a very heavy silhouette, that's fine too. I 
All right. Yeah, okay, now you can see a little bit of a change. You may not be able to in the filming of this. I'm going to get a smaller brush because I'm losing some of the stuff I want. And this is going pretty quick. Which is great. Got a lot to do. I know I'm always complaining about that, but I do have a tremendous amount to do today. So if I can get this done, get it going, that'll be great. Yeah, okay, now you may not be able to see it, but now some of the colors are starting to come out more. Not a lot, but I can always go back into it if I don't want to just have it just com completely a very plain silhouette. Now see that contrast is going to make the sky just really, really stick out. And that's what I want. Now what I'm doing in the oil painting that I'm going to get back to work on tomorrow is uh, blue colors, some very strong blue colors in the sky working with the red and then the sun. So even though I am trying to work with that in this YouTube, it's not exactly what I'm talking about. Get back to that tomorrow. I really love oils and that is my medium. Okay, I'm going to cross here. Maybe, oh good, that's what I want. I want a little more variety. So even though it's a silhouette, I did want to get a little more variety than just a completely dark area. So add a little, get a little lighter through here. Yeah, there we go. It's as I've told many students when I explain composition or spacing, whatever you want to call it, it's really not a good idea to have everything go left to right because we read left to right or in one direction depending on where you're from so you tend to go chunk, and you're gone but it's all in how you do it and I've seen certainly some really good paintings that it was just left to right it's all in how it's done I, I was always very careful to explain to students that you gotta watch those rules you know these things can help but don't get bogged down in them don't make them laws because then you really do stifle your creativity and you get stuck in rules and art is about freedom. Going outside the picture plane here, that's okay, just going into that. Okay, that's um, getting there. Might just quit. I might try the sky a little more, but you know, it's, since it's pretty much drying now and it's already done the bleeding, I might just leave it as it is and this is going to be a real short YouTube. And that's okay. so much to look at on YouTube. It's like, good grief. I look at people that I'm following and wow. It's like, oh my goodness. So much time. I didn't mean to do that. Oh well. Get some more variety there. I um try to, but good grief. Who's got the time to look at zillions of YouTubes? But I do. Everyone that looks at mine, comments at mine, I go through and I look at theirs. And it takes up a lot of time plus all the other social media I'm doing. So that's why I'm always griping about time. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Yeah, I'm getting to the end of this. Yeah, so I wanted a little more variety, even though it is a silhouette. And it didn't, the colors didn't pop out the way they do with my oil paint so much. They kind of meshed in more. All right, I think I'll separate the um, field part a little more so that it doesn't completely mesh together. Uh, I'm probably going to quit. May work on it a little more later. Probably put some birds in the sky. That's always nice. But I need to get a really tiny brush because this is very small. It's only like um, 3 by 4. And as I've said many times, there are a lot of paintings that I do on YouTube that they're not for sale because I'm using real cheap paper and real cheap paint. But you can get great archival prints of these and lots of people do. And I've had some people have me enlarge these and turn them into oil paints for commissions and that's fine I'll do that too. Okay I want to see if I can go back into the sky a little more and not mess it up. But I think I better use a bigger brush. Or I am going to kind of mess it up. Maybe just add a little more yellow into it. This is a uh, this is the effect I am working towards and I'm Hoping that this is going to work out as well in my oil paint. 
Okay, now I think it's going to mess up, so I'm going to quit real quick here. It's going to start looking a little stiff. I know a lot of what I'm saying doesn't make any sense, but I did if you paint a lot. Okay, I'm trying to kind of focal point right through here, so even though it's kind of left to right, it's still got organization, and that's what so much of art is all about. It's a creation, it's organization, whether it looks like something or doesn't. I saw a really, really beautiful Kandinsky painting on the internet yesterday. Really nice one I hadn't seen before. And he, uh, although he did some what we call representational, he really got into abstract, where you look at it and you like it. If you like it, it's because of the way it looks, not because of what it looks like. And we all have our biases. I know I've talked this, about this before. That, uh, you know, we like different things, to see different things. And if there's no recognizable subject matter, then it becomes a pure painting experience. And you either react to it because of that and like it, or you don't. You certainly don't have to. But uh, you can't say, well, it's a horse, I like this it's a horse. It's a car, I like it's a car. It's ballerinas, I don't like ballerinas. You know? <laughs> it's, uh, it becomes a pure visual experience, not better. Not better, in my opinion, not better. I've said this before too. Not better than art that looks like something. It's just that there's no distractions. And it is purely on the basis of what it looks like as to whether you like it or not. I was gonna have little breaks in the trees, but I thought that's gonna be too much. So I'm pulling it right now. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop right there. Well, wait, there's one more thing I wanna do. That's always the way art is. One more thing, one more thing. Ah, there's one more thing up there. It's gotten a little too hard edged for me. And then I'm going to quit. Yeah, maybe even harder. All right, just a little bit more here. Just something right through there. It's bugging me. There, that's better. You know, it's just getting too, too solid for a sky that's bleeding and moving around with the colors. Okay, and I think that needs a little more red up there. I don't know if this makes sense. <laughs> comes from years and years of painting and my own likes and dislikes. My own, what we call it, my own personal aesthetic. Okay. Oh. <laughs> One more little thing. All right, I think I'm gonna stop right there. I probably will add some birds to get some movement and do a little more with the space. But other than that, it's probably gonna look pretty much like what you saw or seeing right now. And surprisingly enough, I went a lot longer than I thought I was going to go. So thank you for watching. Please click on the link in the description to see the final painting, and then there are links to my Etsy shop, to my website, and other sites that have my work.